Now, as we get the connection from this victim windows machine, the question arises: how the victim can identify that the system is compromised and how they can analyze the network traffic on their machine that this particular process has established a connection or not. For that, first of all, let's identify the active process in the machine. Go to task manager. And in task manager, go to this details section. If you want, you can start with the startup application, where different applications are initiated at the time of login. So you can see we have our application, FDM, Vector, mobile device, Microsoft Edge, OneDrive, and few others here. If we go with this details section, you can see we have few other applications as well with their executable files and you can verify that these are the running applications and they are initiated by different users available in the system. Some of them are started or initiated by the network services. Some of them are started by this user Siddharth and few of them are initiated by the system itself. We can simply trust all the applications, all the processes by the system in simple in general case but not all the time. In simple words, we can simply verify all the applications which are initiated by the user. Because in most of the case, the user application, the user processes are considered as a malware. Not, not server or not system application, not system processes are considered as malware in most of the case. But a system process or system service could also be a malware as well. If your malware has attached itself to a system service or system process, then it will start as a system process or system service. So you have to analyze them as well in that case. But in our case, because we have not migrated the malware from one process to the another one, our malware is still executed by the normal user here. Now, if you simply sort them by the name and let's sort them by the user here, you can see the process ID for this backdoor.exe is 7180. Now, if you want to verify what different connections are established by this process, you can go with the terminal and take help of a utility called as netstat. NetState gives you the statistics for the network connections here. You can go with the minus H to get a list of all their arguments for the options available. We're going to use two, three of them. Display all the connections, display address and ports in numeric format, and then display the process ID. If you want, you can just avoid this port number in numeric format if you want. Now, Let's go with O and A. If we hit enter, you will see these are the few connections established by the victim machine or our current Windows machine. And among them, we can see we have a process ID 7180. We have an entry for this process ID as well. And the connection is established from this machine 129 to 128 on the port 4444. Now, if you want to analyze the network traffic, you can go with the Wireshark here and then start capturing the traffic for your Ethernet or Wi-Fi, whatever connection, whatever interface you are connected with. So let's go with the Internet, the Ethernet. And here you can see we got a lot of packets here. Now, if I simply send a command from the Kali Linux machine to the Windows machine, we might get some packets from this Kali Linux machine, right? Here we can add a filter IP dot ADDR equal equal 192.168.119.128 because we can see the connection is established from our own machine to this attacker's machine. So we can apply the filters that I want to filter the network packets or the traffic for this particular IP in source or the destination. A simple case. Now, these are the different packets which are transmitted between the victim machine and the attacker's machine. right? And through these simple checks, you can analyze the 
traffic in the wireshark as well but we we'll only analyze if the traffic is in plain text now if i send a if i want to forward this one you can see the traffic the packets are not readable because when we create the malware we get a whole list now let's get uid we are still a user if i go with pwd command you can see i am available in c windows system 32 linux and we get a list of all these entries so we can move to cd and let's go to cd we don't have to go with the cd because we just have to analyze the traffic now the main case is the payload that we have used is windows metapreter reverse tcp windows metropreter reverse tcp and this payload always transmit the connection over tls all of your packets are transmitted with the tls encryption right and that's the reason why your packets are not readable in wireshark simple if you transmit the traffic over the payloads something like which involve the http right let's say http underscore reverse underscore tcp so this kind of payloads will transmit your malware payloads or let's say will transmit your connection will set establish a connection over an insecure channel because we have used http if you want to secure it you can use https or if you want to keep it default you can keep it as reverse underscore tcp which by default establish connection with tls which is encrypted so the victim will not be able to read the packets in the wireshark but they can verify the active connections between the different process between different devices as well now if they want to block all these connections they can simply use the kill command they just need to specify the process id for example in our case the process id is 7180 let's go with kill and the process is no longer active if you want to verify you can go with this task manager and verify here with the name let's search for backdoor.exe so there is no entry for this process backdoor and if we check in the Kali Linux the connection is terminated now there is another way which victim can use to secure their devices and that was known as firewalls right so firewall simply helps you in filtering your incoming and outgoing connections and for that you can take help from the built-in windows firewall right and you can configure your firewall rules in windows defender firewall advanced security all you have to do is just go with these inbound incoming rules and you can specify the outbound the outgoing connection request inbound means the connection is initiated by the other user or let's say some server or let's say the attacker right and the connection request is accepted by other machine but in case of outbound rules the rules are implemented on the connections which are initiated by our machine and accepted by some other machines right so you can implement and you can create your rules for inbound and outbounds here simple so what to do is if i want to block all the outgoing traffic just create a rule suppose i want to implement this rule for all the specific applications so i'll go with this custom rule just to see all the different options available here go with the custom go with next i want to apply this rule for all the application not to a specific one go with next i want to apply this rule for c protocol you can pick it from here or you can go with any protocol number if you want to specify you can otherwise you can keep the as default and then go to next now which local ip address does this rule apply to i want to apply this rule to all of the local ip addresses now which remote ip address you want to apply it for i'll apply it to all the remote ip addresses if you want 
you can specify and add the IP addresses. You can specify the range and you can specify the gateways as well. So it's your how you want to customize your rule. Other than this, let's say let's keep this rule for all the remote machines. Go to next. I want to block the connection. This is an outbound rule. So all the outbound connections will be blocked by the machine. Let's go to next. Now, which profile you want to is apply this rule to? Let's say I want to apply this rule only for the public networks. If you are connected to a domain network in your organization, you can implement it for the domain. If you are on a private network, you can apply it for private. And if you want, you can apply it for public as well. It's completely your call. Other than that, now let's go to next. Name it as block for outgoing connections. If you want, you can add descriptions. It's completely your call. And then you can go with the finish. And the rule is implemented here. Now, if you see a green tick here, it means the rule is created to allow the connection. And if you saw a red circle with a crossing line, which means the not applicable, let's say the blockage symbol, which is used to block the connections. Right? This green check is usually referred to the allow. And this red circle with the crossing line is usually referred to the block requests. And all those rules which do not have any block or the allow symbols here, it means the rule is present, but the rule is not activated. It means you have to enable or disable the rule first. If I enable it, you can see the rule is used to allow the connection. And if I disable it, the rule is no longer active. You can enable, disable your own rule. You can just view or edit your rules as well so let's go to right click and then you can go to properties to make some changes in the rule here now let's say we created the rule and now if i want to verify the rule is working or not you can verify it through the browsers right and now if i want to restart my device just to verify that the malware will work or not let's just restart the device and let's start the connection listener here as well. Restart anyway. Now let's log in 4565. We are still listening here. And let's verify this one. Let's verify the task manager. Go to startup apps. The backdoor is still there. Go to details and let's search here for backdoor. We have to search it so let's just scroll and search for this backdoor.exe file so the file is not there and we're still listening let me just execute the file manually just to verify the rule is working or not so go to downloads the malware is still here let's execute it I don't see a malware just on it. Oops, it's not gonna work. So let's run it from the start menu. Start up and back down. Let's go to open and as you can see. All the outbound traffic are blocked by the firewall that is configured in the Windows device. Now if you want to enable it, go to firewall again. And let's see if we disable the rule, will it establish a connection or not? So we can see that when the rule is active, we are not able to establish a connection. 
and let's disable it and now let's execute the file and as soon as we execute we can see we get a connection request here it means victim can secure their device easily just by blocking the outbound connection all they have to do is they can simply allow the outbound connection on specific standard ports like 443 or 80 this 443 and port 80 are used for http and https services and rest they can block all the outbound traffic simple 